Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video update. So we're going to have a look at when it's week 10 days. What day's second video? Uh, we're in number 5D forecast. You can find that video here on the homepage. It's above the snow desk, which will be replaced by the pollen count very shortly, probably on the 1st of uh, May. Um, so the 5D forecast is above the snow desk right now. And uh, also there's written version you can get that from buttons at the top of the page. This video will be extending out beyond the 5D forecast period. Um, and it's looking very unsettled, both for the five-day forecast period and for the week to 10-day forecast period. Uh, we'll also have a look at the Beijing Climate Centre for the next uh, 40 days as well. So quite a bit to cram into this video. Just say that tonight, around 7 o'clock, we'll have the uh, next update for the uh, bank holiday weekend. So I think that's going to be our third update for the May Day bank holiday. That'll be coming up around 7 o'clock this evening. Let's we'll start off um, we're looking at the GFS uh, temperature and precipitation ensembles. We're looking at Ipswich uh, today down in the south of the country. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Ipswich. And we've gone pretty cool now. We're going to be staying cool, really, for the rest of April. Anyway, this is the 1st of May uh, just here. So uh, pretty cool temperatures coming up now until the end of the month. Then as you go from the first week of May into the second week of May, this period just here, Looks like overall temperatures are staying quite cool as well. However, there is a little bit of a warming trend beginning to appear uh, right at the very end of the ensemble. Uh, so this is a long way out. This is into the second week of May. But there is a bit of a warming trend uh, starting to appear for that period. However, there are still some quite cold ensemble members as well. Uh, it's in the extended range, so you always expect quite a lot of scatter within the ensemble uh, members in that kind of uh, period. So in the reliable sort of week to 10-day time frame, uh, it looks like it's pretty cool really now. Uh, extended range going up to around two weeks away, possibly signs of a warming trend appearing there. Uh, and you'll notice, perhaps more um, evidently than the temperatures, what's happening with precipitation, because we have got a lot of rainfall spikes coming up over the next few days. So certainly through to the end of April, we're going to have more regular bouts of wet to weather. And then it looks like through next week, also quite a lot of precipitation spikes coming up then as well, uh, taking us through the first week of May. Looks like there'll be further prolonged and at times quite heavy periods of rain. So it certainly looks like quite a wet start to May, uh, to say the least. How, this is how the service temperatures are looking uh, in Glasgow. So uh, we're starting at uh, 10 degrees uh, just there for Glasgow. It's hovering around 10 degrees pretty much uh, through to the early part of May, that's 1st of May again, uh, just there. Maybe some slight signs of a bit of a warming through this second week of May. It is a long way off, only going up towards the mid-teens Celsius, so really quite disappointing temperatures, at least until we get to the end of the first week of uh, May. If we have a look at the uh, temperatures uh, ensembles for Ipswich, we start again around or just a little bit above 10 degrees Celsius, generally staying at that sort of level uh, throughout and then maybe again through this second week of May signs of a little bit of a warming trend going towards the mid-teens Celsius perhaps by the very end of the ensemble which takes us into around the middle of the second week of May uh, turning a little bit warmer uh, then. So we have got signs of uh, slight increase in temperature through the second week of May but until then it looks pretty cool and obviously, we'll be precipitation spikes very, very unsettling. Did you notice there are far more uh, precipitation spikes for Ipswich than if we go back to uh, Glasgow? There's a precipitation spikes for Glasgow. Uh, and you'll notice there are far fewer precipitation spikes on the ensemble graph for Glasgow than there are compared to uh, Ipswich. So this is telling us that the jet stream is going to be going on a southerly track, which is going to take a lot of wet to weather into the southern part of the country. A bit of a flip around of what you normally expect, which is for the north to be wettest and the south to be driest. It's a little bit of a flip on that. Temperature anomalies for the next week, going from the 24th of April to the 2nd of May, are coming out a little bit colder 
than average. So uh, it is looking like a pretty cool end to April and start to May. And there's a precipitation on it. It uh, shows what I was just talking about with England and Wales coming out with um, a significantly wet uh, precipitation anomaly from the 24th of April to 2nd of May, while Scotland and to some degree Northern Ireland coming out with a drier than average precipitation anomaly. So the rain is in the south, the driest weather is in the north, and as I say, that is quite a flip on what we normally expect to see with our rainfall distribution. So this is how uh, Sunday is long. We've got one batch of very wet weather uh, heading up across the country on Friday. You can find out more about that on the five-day forecast. Weekend not showery, but as we get through to the end of Sunday, we're watching this area of low pressure down here around France and the Bay of Biscay. That's threatening the weather on Sunday, but it's probably going to be more Monday that that pushes northwards. So look at this. On Monday, we've got low pressure sitting just to our south and southeast across northern parts of France and the Channel. We've got a strong to almost gale force east to northeastly wind, and there's going to be a lot of heavy rain uh, pushing northwards as well. So that's cold, wet and windy for England and Wales. On the final day of April, we may well be struggling to see temperatures much above 6 or 7 degrees with a howling easterly wind and a lot of very wet weather as well. It's going to be a pretty horrendous end to April if that comes off. The only caveat with that is that it has been pushed back 24 hours. Yesterday, it looked like this low pressure would be impacting us sort of Saturday night to Sunday. Now it looks like it's Sunday night to Monday. So it is being pushed back a bit, but um, still there, bringing the chance of a bit of a deluge for southern and eastern parts of the country early next week. Uh, through the course of the rest of next week, just keep low pressure close to the country, so there's further showers or longer spells of rain. The wind's back into the west, so it's not quite as cold as it is with that rain, those easterly winds on Monday, but nevertheless, it's still uh, looking unsettled. There's further showers or bouts of rain coming through here. We're going up to day 10. Now it just takes us to the start of the bank holiday weekend, Saturday the 5th of May, and it's still looking unsettled, really, in this westerly flow, bringing further showers and maybe some longer spells of rain to the northwest. However, just beyond that, it does look as though we try and build a bit of a ridge to our south and the east as we go deeper into the bank holiday weekend. Remember, we will touch on this in more detail in uh, tonight's May Day Bank Holiday update. But uh, very gradually, as we go into the second week of May, it looks like we're beginning to build some high pressure close to the country. So that is turning things drier and warmer. Don't necessarily think in that size of a heat wave. It has been a little bit of speculation in the... Um, media, I think, uh, just over the last day or two, about the chance of heat wave conditions in May. I'm not seeing any signs of that at the moment. We may get a heat wave in May. It certainly isn't out of the question at all. After all, we've had we have just had a heat wave in uh, April, so we could certainly get one in May, but at this point, there's not really much sign of it. Yes, it does, so we may build some high pressure close to us through the second week of May, but the position of this ridge wouldn't deliver especially hot uh, conditions. But certainly, we may well break out of the unsettled weather anyway through the second week of May, and at least for time, turn things a little bit drier and warmer. E7F looking like that, so again, the weekend's looking rather showery. There's below pressure uh, down over France and near Biscay on Sunday. What is ECM going to do with that? So it does push it towards us now. If you remember yesterday, the ECM was keeping this low pressure away to our east. Now it is giving us a direct in, uh, direct hit, a direct impact on the east coast. So proper wet weather moving up from France as we go into the early part of next week. That's Monday 30th of April. And um, then we keep that low pressure going. This is Tuesday the 1st of May, bringing further showers, if not longer spells of rain to uh, some parts of the country. Staying and settled through most of next week. But again, as we head up towards the bank holiday weekend, just signs of a little bit of a ridging beginning to build into the south of the country anyway. Although still rather changeable, especially to the north. That's how we look on day 10, Saturday the 5th of May. Scotland still showery. England and Wales probably a little bit drier and warmer. Close to this influence from the Azores High uh, by that point. So quite a lot of wet weather to get out of the way. This is a precipitation forecast from that to GFS run at theweatheroutlook.com. Tomorrow we're facing 
uh, a lot of showers across the country. And then overnight, Thursday to Friday, here comes that first batch of really wet weather into Wales and southwestern England. And that gives us a real soaking through the course of Friday morning across much of central southern England and Wales, as far north as, say, the North Midlands, some really wet weather through the course of Friday, hanging around through most of the day across East Asia and South East England, so threatening a bit of a washout uh, for the far South East, elsewhere it probably is clearing back towards showers uh, in the North and West. I just better get the phone. Right, phone answered, and uh, we'll get on with the rest of the video. Sorry about that. If I wasn't running late, I'll probably record this again, but I am running very late today, so I haven't really got time to stop and start again. So, no, hopefully no more interruptions with telephone. Uh, this is how the uh, GFS precipitation forecast is looking for Friday uh, evening, so still wet across East Anglia and South East England. As I was saying before, we was interrupted. It does look as though it could be a bit of a washout across southern and southeastern parts of the country on Friday, uh, clearing to showers further north and west as well. Then we go through uh, the weekend, and Saturday could bring some big showers uh, there across the country. They may contain hail and thunder. Um, then we've got rain threatening to our south through the course of Sunday. Now, it looks like it's just about holding off on Sunday, although there are showers across Wales and southwestern parts of England on a sunny afternoon, but then it's overnight sunny into Monday, it turns really, really wet, look at all this heavy rain piling up from the uh, south and east during the course of Monday, this was winter, this will be another real snowmaker type situation, uh, and then through the course of Monday, just a really, really wet day, it could be a, uh, a real washout if that could, uh, if that comes off, um, talk about like 25 millimetres of rain, an inch of rain there across many parts of England and Wales. All the time, Scotland and Northern Ireland staying out of trouble. So that's why there's a bit of a flip around with the uh, precipitation anomalies with the wettest weather where we've got all this rain across England and Wales and the driest weather uh, further north. So two bouts of significant wet weather uh, on on uh, Friday and then again on Monday for much of England and Wales. And our 10-day uh, accumulated precipitation chart looks like that uh, with uh, widely sort of 40 to uh, 70 millimetres of rain being predicted for many parts of England and Wales and particularly down in the south. The wettest weather is in the far southwest um, and there around parts of Devon and Cornwall we're seeing anything up to 90 millimetres of rain that will be particularly over the moors um, but uh, it looks like it'll be a quite a wet sort of week to 10 days at England and Wales not as wet as that further north uh, just have a quick look at the Beijing Climate Centre for the next uh, month or so so these are 500 millimetres of heights broken down into 10 day periods the first 10 day period will take us from the 26th uh, from the 26th of April through to the 5th of May. So the coming 10 days is looking very unsettled. A deep trough of low pressure centred over, almost over top of the British Isles. There's no real high pressure to save us either. Uh, it's all down from the south and west, so we can expect a lot of showers, if not longer spells of rain, in the next 10 days. We know that's particularly focused on England and Wales. Now, the next 10 days does bring a slight improvement. This is the 6th through to the 15th of May. It does encompass a bank holiday period, of course. So we've got uh, still below average heights to our north, but we are raising the heights to some degree. Not a real big build of pressure, but we are raising the heights to some degree down to the south. So that is rather drier and rather warmer. That's as far as I'd go uh, with that. It isn't uh, a classic area of high pressure building over top of the country or heat wave type situation, but it is a bit drier. It is a bit warmer there as we're going through the second, uh, sort of the second week of, uh, of May. And we may be seeing signs of the GFS picking up uh, that single as well. However, look at this. We go through to the 16th to the 25th of May and a clear deterioration with below average heights coming back and almost centred over the top of the country. That would be a real deterioration through the third week of May with uh, a lot of showers and longer spells of rain. And with the jet stream generally a little bit to our south around here, 
with the trough within the 500 mil bar flow. That will be pretty cool as well. And then we go through to uh, the final 10 days, days 31 to 40. And this looks pretty grim as well. This is the 26th of May through to the 4th of June with, again, below average heights almost parked over the top of the uh, country. And now we're even starting to see signs of a little bit of northern blocking appearing to way to our north up towards uh, Greenland and the North Pole. That's never a very good sign in the summer because when you get northern blocking up there, you'll tend to set up an area of low pressure trough underneath it. And typically that trough will sit across western parts of Europe, just churning away showers or long as well as the rain. So you don't really want to be seeing uh, orange colours appearing across the northern latitudes in summer. Uh, you want blue colours, low pressure in the, uh, in the northern latitudes over the pole and the Arctic and Greenland uh, in the summer. And when you get that, you'll tend to strengthen the Azores high in the uh, mid-latitude. So that isn't really what you want to be seeing. It is days 31 to 40, so it's not really worth worrying about. But uh, the signs are there, but we are in for a continued pretty mixed and unsettled period uh, as we go through the course of uh, May. Um... But there is just chance of something a little bit drier and warmer appearing through the second week of May. So that is something to uh, watch out for. In the, that's all very speculative. In the more immediate time frame, so it is unsettled for the rest of April. The rain is especially focused on the southern part of the country. A lot of wet weather to come on Friday and Monday. We keep the unsettled weather going up towards the bank holiday weekend. But could we be seeing signs of something a little bit drier and warmer, perhaps, for the bank holiday weekend itself? Possibly. And we'll have more on that in tonight's uh, third May Day bank holiday weekend update. That'll be around 7 o'clock this evening. So come back for that. Uh, but that's all for now. And thanks for watching.